Okay, everybody out there in uh, Quantum Fly land, uh, Dave here and Mike, and uh, we're about to go to uh, make a flight today. Actually, we're supposed to make this flight, um, and we we're going to try to hurry and get back in because there's a TFR, or was a TFR, here in Sanford today for the president. Well, we found out at midnight last night that the president and the first lady both have coronavirus, so the TFR has already been lifted. Doesn't mean that we're not gonna to try to stay on schedule, but today's kind of exciting. We're doing our uh, pre-flight, which you should always do on your iPad. Make sure you check all the airports along the way, especially someone like me, who's VFR, until I get my IFR like Mike. So, I mean, the great thing about having Mike here is, is if we do get into a situation where we have to come back IFR, then he takes the plane and comes back. In fact, you probably do it anyway today, because we're gonna, play around with the Avidyne again. I think we figured it out. At least I think I figured it out. I have one of my, my A&Es show me how to work it. So today we're going X05. And it's kind of exciting because um, we're actually going to be meeting quite possibly the country's youngest CSIP. And for those of you who don't know what CSIP is, C-S-I-P, that stands for Cirrus Standardized Instructor Pilot. And there's only 300 and, what did I say, 385? Something like that. 385 CSIPs in the whole world. So getting your CSIP, number one, is pretty awesome. Getting your CSIP at 22 years old is really awesome. Yeah. So, so uh, this guy happens to be a uh, uh, son of my best buddy in high school. So ironic that he would end up becoming a CSIP. So we're going to go ahead and do some uh, quick uh Flight planning, we're going to do some weather checks, and then we're going to get in the plane and go. We've already done the pre-flight, and um, we'll join you in the cockpit uh, when we get there. So, enjoy. Did you ever want to do something real bad, and you got ready for it, and you prepared, set everything up, uh, days in advance, you're ready. And then the time comes and you can't do it. Well, if you've ever gone through that, you're probably a pilot because we set all that stuff up and did our pre-flight and uh, checked our weather. And at the end of the day, we couldn't make our trip to Tampa because of the little electrical problem. So this... Um, there's not a lot of uh, flight tape in here, but there's a lot of good information. If you own a Cirrus SR20 and you want to understand how they work, at least, you know, that's the only saving grace for me is I get to see, you know, I get to learn more about the plane. So anyway, um, with the help of Airworks, I, uh, I, got, a, I got an education. We've had a little bit of an issue with the plane. I was supposed to go to Tampa last week. We were going to do a flight to uh, pilot country. Mike and I had set the whole thing up. We laid out our plan to do it and uh, got the plane up to the run-up area. As soon as I got to the run-up area, the alternator one suddenly tripped. When I went to reset the alternator, it tripped again. So, um, we have an issue. And that issue has to do with the alternator, and clearly, and it also has to do with something in the electrical system for alternator number one. So, here we are in the hangar, and there's the plane. You can see it doesn't look too good. Let's go take a look at what the uh, problem is. So once again, hats off to Airworks, uh, Chick and Jonathan. Um, literally, as I brought the plane back in from the run-up, he took one look at it, saw the alternator one tripping, and these are the guys that keep a local flight school's Cirruses up and running. Uh, they know Cirruses really well, and um, they, uh, Told me right off the bat, this has got to be 
a so after the run up and the discovery that every time I tried to turn alternator number one on uh, the plane uh, the alternator tripped uh, I I taxied the plane over in front of Airworks uh, hangar here at the southeast ramp in Sanford Florida and um, they took a look at it and sure enough they suggested this is probably uh, the field service the they correctly identified the problem a uh, fairly common problem evidently on Sirai which is the field power module and uh, that field power module looks like this it is a metal device with a potting in it and um, you know what let me just show it to you so here is the offending article field power module <clears throat> the field power module and this device uh, is mounted inside the um, field power unit the actual power unit that's on the plane and that is right right over here so you can see in the box okay there you can see alternator 2 still up there if you look really really close back in the back I don't know if I can get it in there there's alternator number two right there and then alternator number one this one I don't know where it came from but it came out of here somewhere I think it I think it goes on the front so a big shout out to Airworks Chick and Jonathan thanks for uh, quickly ascertaining the problem and divining a solution for the uh, SR-20. She'll be back in the air and uh, raring to go. I mean, op operationally, man, it's it's been running great. Uh, we just did a, um, a couple approaches last week, both me and Chick, because he was uh, showing me the ropes on the new Avidine system and uh, followed the approach just perfect, did a perfect teardrop entry off the STEC 55X autopilot and everything seems to be working the way it's supposed to. So, thumbs up, we found our problem, and um, we get to go flying again.